are beginning of the NA qualifiers for the day for MDL Macau. We've got Immortals here against CES, and we get right on into this game one draft in this best of three. You take a look at the bands from both sides. Immortals, they ban the Ogre Magi, ban Brewmaster, and the Shadow Demon. While for the other side, CES, they ban out the Winter Wyvern, Spirit Breaker, and that Tiny that we've seen a lot of play with. Uh, tiny really coming into the meta uh, quite strong right now and works well with a lot of heroes, has a lot of chemistry with a lot of heroes. So we take a look, CS, Dazzle, Earth Spirit, their two supports as their first two picks. Immortals and looking more at the Night Stalker and that's what they pick up for their roaming four for CS. Dazzle Earth Spirit early, always nice. Earth Spirit going to be roaming around the map quite often. You know, looking for that rolling boulder, looking to follow that up with a boulder smash and and work with some heroes, work with his cores to get some early kills. And now Immortals, they pick up the Rubik. So, got that slow from the Night Stalker, the Telekinesis that comes out from the Rubik. That lift up there, lock in for their core. So these support duos for both sides are pretty good, especially in the later game when Dazzle has that shallow grave. Maybe you get a couple more kills or output a little bit more damage that helps you win that team fight. Of course, you've got the weave that's going to help you later on in the game. Uh, but, of course, that weave is always a threat to be taken by the Rubik. So Night Stalker, Rubik, some good nighttime vision. Some good ability to really start off those ganks with the Telekinesis. If you line that up with something like a Chaos Knight, where you get the 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 Void out from the Night Stalker with the Lift, the Chaos Bolt, it's Lockdown, on Lockdown, on Lockdown, where uh, it could look good for Immortals with the CK. And as I say that, they ban it out, and CS, they ban out the Viper, so... Mid band out, a safe laner band out, or really CK, he's been in the off lane. I've seen him there a couple times, but that's really more of a case of swapping your off laner with your safe Ten laner for farm seconds. reasons or better matchup reasons. So five seconds remaining. I have to see what CS don't want to deal with next. Both teams going with their four and five position. Uh, not really telling you too much about where they really want to go with this draft and you know, there are a couple of big names out there still available. You've got the Invoker. You've got the, the Puck still available. Quop's getting picked up quite a bit. Uh, Sven, always a threat to be picked up, especially with either of these teams where he really works well early with the stuns or the slows of, you know, Immortals or CS, respectively. So they ban out the Bloodseeker. Been seeing a lot of Bloodseeker bans, not really seeing him picked up too often. You know, a lot of teams thinking he's a big-time threat, and I see him banned quite, Five seconds remaining. Uh, quite a lot. Turn to pick. So Terrorblade banned out. One of those cores that can, you know, come back from 10,000 down, 15,000 down, even 20,000 down. You name it. One good team fight for Terrorblade really opens up the game. And I've seen that so many times, and for Immortals, it looks like they're gonna... It looks like their draft might want to go the slower route. Um, Terrorblade is a heavy-duty pusher, especially with that Metamorphosis. You don't want to be up against them. They might be going for a little bit of a slower, more farm-oriented lineup for the side of Immortals with that ban of Terrorblade. Radiance turn to pick. So, Underlord picked up for CS. So that offlane Underlord with some nice lockdown form with the Pit of Malice. Heavy damage in the Firestorm and the Global Presence with the uh, Dark Rift. And then Immortals, they go to the Puck, which is a pick I really like early or midway through the draft because Puck... He's one of those heroes now with the fact that he gets put in to the off lane more often than not. Um, Puck is one of those heroes where you're not showing your hand too much. Um, and he could be going mid, he could be going off lane, dependent on the matchup. For Puck, though, 
Uh, it's even more locked down. It's silence now with the waning rift. So look for Immortals to be looking for some pretty good team fights, starting with the Night Stalker, with the Rubik, who will probably be their initiators for the side of Immortals, and then get the Dream Coil on top of that. For CS, they pick up the Dragon Knight. So Dragon Knight here with the Underlord. Dragon Knight probably going to be going mid. He's... I would say a harder matchup, or not too hard of a matchup, actually. And I kind of rethink that for the puck. Avoid pretty much what's thrown at you with the uh, phase shift. But Dragon Knight, hard to kill, especially once he gets that passive. So he is pretty safe in that middle lane. For Immortals, they pick up the Timber Saw. So Timbersaw, Puck, Rubik, Night Stalker, Timbersaw, we've been seeing a little bit more and more. He's been getting banned out quite often, especially in this uh, NA region. Good against a lot of this team for CES with the mobility that he brings, with the damage output of the Whirling Death, the Timber Chain, everything of uh, in his arsenal is going to be good against CES. And combine that with the lockdown of a very nicely placed dream coil you got nowhere to run unless you want to stun yourself timber saw comes across and you really are in quite a bit of trouble gyrocopter banned out by cs good ban out there you don't want the call down on top of you with the puck dream coil and uh gyro we've seen a lot of him as he has been going first item mask of madness and just destroying these teams he's another hero too that can you know, we've seen a lot of uh, stacking of the Ancients. Not something I don't think we saw that too much in the last patch. Uh, it was a lot more common earlier. But, you know, you get these heroes like a Sven, like a Gyrocopter that can, you know, risk it a little bit more. And if they do have a bad laning phase, go to the Ancients, farm that up a little later in, and uh, boost that net worth, boost that farm up. Uh, just the other day I saw Sven. He was, you know, let that Ancient stack get to five stacks. He got that blink, took the Ancient stack, and boom, had 2,500 more gold. And was really pulling ahead, and they did end up winning that game. So it's kind of either a way to push yourself ahead more, or really come back from a weaker laning stage. So Anti-Mage banned out from Immortals hero that's been picked up a lot as well and one that's quite strong they're gonna go with the medusa mid not too much of, of a surprise really strong mid really strong into that mid to late game puck in the off lane timber saw in that safe lane uh immortals they look really strong especially with the lockdown they have medusa you kind of are on a timer i'd say for ces medusa and timber saw if they have good early games they are gonna wreak havoc on you through the mid and late game And then CS, they finish off their draft with a Shrak. Interesting. So a Shrak, Dragonite, Underlord, Earth Spirit, Dazzle up against Medusa, Timbersaw, Puck, Rubik, Night Stalker. Definitely a very interesting line up for the side of uh, CES against this immortal side. If you take a look at the lineups, I do believe that Immortals, their late game is very strong, especially, you know, Puck does ramp up there. He doesn't really fall seconds. off too much. Maybe, you know, if he wants to pick up an Ags a little later Five in the game, work through the BKBs that will ultimately be picked up by CES, especially on that Dragonite. Um, Mortals, the lockdown's going to be there. The heavy damage output's going to be there. I think Immortals' lineup is very strong. CES with his last pick of Shrek. We'll have to see how they play with that. And, um, you know, with Shrek, Dragonite, Underlord, Earth Spirit, Dazzle, if they have a very good early game. I wouldn't be surprised to see them really uh, jump down the throats of Immortals. So we are ready for this game one. 
of this best of three between Immortals, between CES, and it's game one of the day. We are ready to go. So let's take a look around the horn. Start with this side of Immortals. QO is going to be on that Timbersaw. MP on the Medusa. Ferev on the Puck. Febby, Nightstalker. Rubik is played by uh, Dubu. Let me take a look at the other side. First CES. Was track uh, uh, played by DK. Mario is going to be on that Dazzle. Annihilate on the Dragonite. MJW on the Underlord. And finally, I think that's way too on the earth spirit at least it was during the open qualifiers so they smoke up and they're gonna head over mid smoke's gonna be broken with mp hiding in the trees so ces early looking uh for an aggressive play a couple of these heroes still smoked up so maybe they still want to look to go around but mjw already disbanding from his team going over and heading up towards top where there is a nicely placed Ward on this bounty rune you take a look over towards bottom over towards this bottom ces bounty rune four are here so don't be surprised to see them make their way over rolling boulder with the split earth they could line up a stun on a slow and look for an early kill we'll see what dazzle wants to take if it's the poison touch or the shadow wave and that does really depend on whether or not Fred's gonna make his way over to this bounty ring he's thinking about it. and if he spots anybody out he's probably just gonna back off and there it is spotting out three heroes on the side of ces and he is gonna retreat so it is two bounty runes of pieces coming over towards the top is going to be MP on this Dusa. So QO MP annihilate as well as DK picking up the bounty runes. MP coming over towards the offlane, interestingly enough. And uh, QO here mid on the timber saw with the safe lane for Rev. So definitely not setting up in a way that I thought it would. But it's a tri lane here for the side of CES with DK. Uh, Earth Spirit and Mario. I'll have to see how Ferev is going to do up against this tri lane of CS. You take a look over top. It's a tri lane right now for Immortals up against MJW and Mario. And they definitely do have the ability to get some kills over top with the Rubik, the Telekinesis, the Void from this Night Stalker. You're going to have to be very careful up top. They do, of course, have Mario there for the Shadow Wave. That's a little bit of a heal, but this early on, there's still some possibility for Immortals to get the kill. MJW is not too careful when you take a look there's the shadow wave again just trying to burst down these immortal heroes and and really push them back so they're not too aggressive you take a look there's the void they do chase in on Mario MJW gonna start to push back MP and Dubu he's got one in that atrophy aura with one in the firestorm so taking that away Pushing back these heroes on the side of Immortals who can't really go in on to CS too heavily. Take a look over top. Febby annihilate over towards that top bound, uh, top haste rune. Finally picking up that haste has himself a bottle. You take a look over made about even on the on the CS char QO. 
Panther at about 16 and 0. No heavy rotations coming out from either side yet. They've stuck over bottom here with the puck. Just not gonna land that split earth with the illusory orb out. Rev's gonna be pretty safe. You take a look again up top. Mario just sitting here with MJW, Dubu, and Febby. There's the telekinesis, but it's not really gonna lead to anything. So just lift up Mario, drop him down. He picks things up, he puts them down. Immortals. Really making anything too heavily of a play as we take a look over QO and Annihilate. Just trading blows, trading CS, pretty much even all around. QO halfway to that level 5 and Annihilate a little bit further ahead. In terms of CS, QO is ahead. You take a look at the Medusa whose lane hasn't been all too hard with NJW and Mario here. MP. Farming quite well as you take a look. NJW only four last hits for him overall. His lane has been very hard for him after the aggression that Immortals has been throwing their way. Uh, waiting to really see if Dubu and this Night Stalker start to head over. The Courier comes on over and not going to give him anything just yet. NJW and Mario are here. There's the Shadow Wave with the Firestorm. They start to give chase. It's going to be a hard kill to get, but you've got the Earth Spirit here with the Rolling Boulder. That's going to land on Fetty. Boulder Smash to follow it up, but it is nighttime. So Hunter in the Night is going to be over into the Roche Pit. Get him out of harm's way, and he will be able to escape. So Fetty, by the skin of his teeth, really getting out of there. And... He's very close. You take a look over bottom. Ferev getting hit hard. The split earth is going to miss. Ferev just makes his way out. And still, four and a half minutes in. There is no first blood. But it is a 1,000 net worth lead for Immortals, so you do take a look, and they are farming better than the side of CES and they're looking very good right now in terms of really pushing back these heroes of CES especially MJW still just 7 and 2 Medusa 27 and 9 farm differential right now of course it's a 1000 net worth lead but Immortals all these lanes are doing quite a good job you're about to have a level 6 here for QO you take a look at the DK he's about to hit level 6 but he's been forced out over into the jungle area and that's serving to be quite a problem. Again, we'll have to see if any aggression comes out really from either side. They've been quite passive. Just looking to uh, continue farming up. Look for those first couple of items. Febby's made his way over, but he's under this Observer Ward, so they know that he's nearby. And with nobody in the mid lane, there's not really much to go after. Rubik and Night Stalker are making their way over mid, but again... With no DK over there, Annihilate just farming the jungle. There's nothing for them to really succeed in grabbing. Good thing about this for Immortals is this is a solo lane for the Medusa. And this Underlord has moved over into the jungle. So Medusa going to have that easy time farming. 34 and 12. QO, he's had an easy time farming as well. He's going to head over here into the jungle. They look for Mario. Look for that first blood. Finally grab it, Dugu. With the Fade Bolt, going to kill off Mario, and Immortals just kind of poking around into the dire side jungle, find themselves a kill. Over near mid is this Invis Earth Spirit, but only level 3. It would be really quite tough for him to want to go in. It's looking as though DK is going to move over top with this Shrack Mario nearby. They're going to probably look to set up some sort of kill over on MP, but very tough. Already level 6, 3 in the Mystic Snake, 2 into this Mana Shield. So to go after him is going to be really, to me at least, a very tough play. They've got two heroes here trying to set up on him, but MP kind of feels it. He heads over into the jungle getting away from this lane. Now three heroes top. With the Dazzle making the rotation, MP going all the way back and getting out of harm's way. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Annihilate taken out. This time, again, it's Dubu, and it's a 3,000 net worth lead for Immortals. They found Annihilate. They'll get the early first blood on Mario. 3,000 net worth lead just seven minutes in. Mortal 
Angels with some heavy pressure with both their supports with QO. CS, they've lost their core as a lost their core of Annihilate, but he's now level 6. So we'll see if they can line up a Dragon Tail, line up a Split Earth, maybe find a couple of kills on Immortals to bring this game back. You take a look over bottom, Ferev just continuing to farm up. He's level 7, has that Dream Coil available. Medusa here just about to hit level 7 as well. Use that Elder Dragon form. They're looking for that top tier one. Meanwhile, Mario and this Earth Spirit are harassing out a hero on the side of Immortals. That hero being Febby on the Night Stalker. But the push is here. DK Annihilate looking to grab this tower. We'll see if they get the deny. Not going to be there. And Annihilate grabs the tower. They did commit the Elder Dragon form to this. Now QO coming in. We're going to see if they're able to chase. DK running away the Whirling Death and the Chakram hits. There's the Timber Chain over the top. You've got two heroes coming from the back from the side of Immortals. We'll see if they're able to line something up. Meanwhile, MJW is going to be taken out by Ferev. In comes the rest of the team. The Void on DK. Annihilate trying to run away. Bottles up. Trying to find himself a little bit more health. Stunned up under the tower is Febby trying to run away now under this tower. One or two more shots would take him out. But now Annihilate all by himself. He'll grab a kill before he drops the Q on MP. He's looking all but dead. There's that Trocrum. There's that Whirling Death. And he will fall. Mario trying to come in with this Earth Spirit. It ends up being a 3 for 1. QO, he's not too scared of this enemy side, especially level 8, 4 in that reactive armor. Up to 20, 5 to 1 for Immortals. They're going to take a tier 1 of their own, and Immortals take a very clean fight. Except for the Night Stalker going down. And they are looking very good right now. QO already with this hood. You take a look at the puck for Reb. MP getting a little bit low. No harm, really. I got 200 health, but I think the shrine is available and it is for them to heal up on. Let's take a look again at Rev has those treads available. Looking for the veil next. Almost level 10. We'll switch it over the net worth here at 10 minutes. And you take a look. It's three leading the way for the side of Immortals. So Rev just looking to continue to push down here as well as Febby. The rotations are coming over. Three heroes smoked up for CES, but not committing all the way just yet. You've got MJW sitting over here, bottom tier one. But with four heroes committed to this lane, that opens up the farm, opens up the map for QO and a couple of these other te uh, teammates of his. He just continuing to farm and really not in any trouble as he picks up that Mask Madness. You take a look over. DK comes in to try and harass QO. They'll grab that tower. You've got Dubu here, so Telekinesis is available over bottom. Meanwhile, they're going to go for this kill on Ferev. They might finally grab themselves a second one, but now here come the rotations. There's the Dark Rift. MJW as well as this Earth Spirit are going to try and get out. Mario with the Shallow Grave. Are they all going to survive? They will. The Dark Rift out. Four heroes are gone. They're all the way over top towards this shrine where they, where they will heal up. They all backed into the trees. The rotation's not quick enough from the side of Immortals, and they all escape. It's a good play there from the side of CES, but still down 5,000 net worth and about to lose their bottom tier one. CES really need to take a fight in their favor. A big fight in their favor to start breaking down this net worth advantage for Immortals. So over mid, they're starting to push this tier one just with the creeps. They'll back away, but four heroes are here over bottom. It's going to be five with Ferev making his way over. They're going to take this tier two. One more shot. There it is for MP. And the push is on. Portal's starting to flood this map with their aggression. They're going to spot this Earth Spirit. Dream Coil comes out. Telekinesis dead he is. Really quick to clean up that Earth Spirit. Oh. 
Mario nearby with the Sentry Ward. Mario trying to get in there and maybe make something happen, but he's forced to use that Shallow Grave, trying to run away. He's not going to make it up all the way towards the stairs. There's just no way. And MP with the kill. There's the Stone Gaze thrown out. DK as well as Underworld trying to come in. Febby with the Void. QO very low on mana. Has that hood, but no Bloodstone just yet. So the regen isn't really great for him at 1.7 on the mana. They force back this enemy CSI. They continue to push over mid down to about half health. And these tier 2 towers are dropping quick. Just 13 minutes into this game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Fortified structures can't be breached. I could. Visibility. So 7-2 early for Immortals. Coming over is going to be CS. I think they're really forced to make a play here. They're going in, but there's the Dream Coil out on two. Elder Dragon form from the back with the Pit of Malice to lock in this puck for him. Getting quite low. He's going to be hit with that Geomagnetic Grip to silence him. He really can't escape. He's going to fall first. Then it's going to be Mario and MJW. You take a look. It's falling is Dubu. Then DK Annihilate all by himself. His Earth Spirit's going to be dropped. Four dead on the side of CS. And now the chase is on. You've got MP, QO, Febby all chasing this Dragonite by his lonesome. And he's not going to live much longer. The Chakram, the Snake are all there to kill him off. And it's a full team wipe for Immortals. So 12-4, to 8,000 net worth lead just 14 minutes into this game. It is looking all Millhouse for Immortals. Skill gap between these teams looking to favor Immortals very heavily right now and it Jeff definitely shows so now QO over to push top creeps are pushing in over mid and this tower only down to about 136 health this top tower at full, but pushing is QO. Not really much rotations coming out. Annihilate over here with MJW and the Earth Spirit. We'll see if they do make a play. You've got four heroes here. Ferev showing himself very close to this tier two. They're just going to try and take it. Febby and Dubu showing, or actually just Febby showing. And CES not looking to commit just yet. So this tier 2 tower up top now losing all of its health. The push is on. Immortal's going to grab this with no rotations coming through from the side of CES. Really don't have much of an answer this early on. Down by 11,000 net worth. There's really nothing they can do. You take a look at Annihilate. Only has a Shadow Blade on the Underlord. He doesn't have too much. Just Arcane Boots. Looking for the Guardian Greaves and Lashrak. Bottle and Drums. Looking for that Kaya first. But I don't think that Kaya is going to really help all too much. Especially with how far ahead Immortals are. Head over to this first Roche. Looking for that Aegis. The regen rune there. It's going to be a pretty slow rush. Maybe CS want to try and contest this, but I don't think they have the power to. Right after that, if anybody gets low, they'll just take the regen. Probably going to put that on MP. Or for right, we'll just pick it up. And there it is. Bloodstone finished. Aegis picked up for QO. The smoke right out of the pit. Looking to go in onto the CS side. I think they're looking to jump down him right now and just finish off this game. You take a look as MP shifts his way over towards top. They're going to push over there, push over mid. And they are heading over bottom with the rotation. Smoke on Ferev. There's the darkness used by Febby. They come in. Annihilates here. The Dream Coil hits. It's going to be Invis thanks to this Shadow Blade. Running away is going to be the Earth Spirit. He gets out with the Rolling Boulder. The Veil placed onto Annihilate, but they still have no idea where he is with no detection. They throw a Sentry Ward by this Shrine, but it goes the other way. Wisely enough, you take a look over top. It's just the rest of CES trying to clean up these creeps. The 
line is drawn. They want to push top. They want to push bottom. They are looking strong enough to do so. Manta and the Mask of Madness finished out on MP. Meanwhile, the Sower Crest here for the Night Stalker. Blink Dagger available for Puck. The push is here for the High Ground Siege onto this Tier 3. Dyer's bottom tower is about to flounder. Again, no answer. There's the Pit of Mouse with the Shadow Wave duo. Not going to be locked in long enough, and he starts to head over in deep to this base. The Tier 3 getting quite low. Still, again, CES just sitting and watching while Annihilate's over top, taking a Tier 2. This really isn't going to be much of a trade. You've got the Aegis. The Weed finally hits on Immortals, but there's no follow-up to it. So you've got this Minus Armor, and it's not really doing too much. Mario going to be taken out by Forev. QO coming in. DK going to run all the way to his Ancient. Not going to be able to run too far because this is Immortals coming in they line up the stuns with the pit of malice with the split earth but it's not enough to kill qo just yet dk finally drops that's going to be lashrak down for 35 seconds no buyback they take out the melee racks they take out the tier three immortals they are invading and ces they have no answer for it especially with annihilate over top still pushing away so the dark rift comes in and they're going to come into this base push with the tier 3 dropping on their side in the mid lane, it's going to be a little bit of trouble. You take a look over towards this top lane. Forev's over here with the Rubik. MJW going to get quite low. He's already dark rifted over here. Annihilate going to get low. He's down to a really low health. The tower comes in. The bottle going to save him. But moving forward is Forev with the Illusory Orb trying to get this kill. The Shadow Wave for the heal. Not going to jump towards the end of that root of the Illusory Orb. Meanwhile, over mid, down goes the tier 3. Down goes the Melee Rax in one more shot. And they're trying to chase the Stone Gaze onto these heroes. DK, he's turned to stone just like that ELL song, ELO song, and DK's gonna fall. Mario dead, three alive on CES, still continuing to chase his duo with MP alive with this pipe keeping him up and healthy. Earth Spirit with that boulder smash survives. The onslaught coming in from QO Annihilate and MJW caught out of base with QO coming from behind. The Solar Crest is on to Annihilate. The Pit of Malice to lock them in. The Geomagnetic Grip silences up two of these heroes, letting Annihilate get away with that Shadow Blade. They haven't killed anybody just yet in this three on five engagement. They get the boulder smash to stun up one of these heroes. QO no longer silent, still coming in. The Weave is out. Let's see if they can finally kill him for the first time. You gotta remember that he still has that Aegis Elder Dragon form as well as the stun comes through on the Timber Saw. Split Earth, Pit of Malice. Dead he is, but he's got another life. Meanwhile, the rest of Immortals are taking the racks and they're looking for Mega Creeps. A big five-man Dream Coil hits everybody on the side of CES. Annihilate getting low. Everybody falling. It's looking like it's just the end. And by everybody falling, it's only one as they make their way back to the well. And CES survive a very nicely placed Dream Coil. But they've lost their base. They've lost their mid racks. They've lost their bottom racks. And there's really no answer. They tried to, to push. They tried to take out top. But they haven't found it. Split Earth is there to stun up QO. He might finally lose the second life. But Annihilate said he's dead for 41 seconds without the buyback. The Shallow Grave. The TP back to base. Not going to be there. MJW drops. Mario is dead. There's four down. And only alive is this Lashrak. Shallow Grave stolen by Dubu. QO deep into the well of the CS side. GG is finally called an Immortals take game one. So Immortals winning game one very easily, 21 to 6, just 21 minutes in. I mean, the net worth was so far in that their advantage, 20,000 net worth up. And Immortals, uh, not dying as MPQO dies once. 6 and 2 for Rev. 4 for Rev. They all look quite good, and that is the end of game one. We're actually switching over to BTS 3. My fault for coming on BTS main. It was a mix-up between myself and others, but... Mostly my fault. We're going over to BTS3. Follow us over there to see the rest of this series. We'll be back in just a moment on BTS3. Stay tuned. one nothing in favor of Immortals. Stay right there.